This question has the potential to be fully loaded, especially when you look at these answer choices, okay? This is a very classic high yield question for step one that uh, USMLE loves, okay? It's integration of microbiology and immunology. They love this question, right? So that's my preface. Why don't we just get into the fucking question? So we have a 52 year old man, diabetic. This is, they tell you he's a diabetic, the implication being he's gonna be slightly immunocompromised, okay? When you have non-enzymatic glycosylation of your vascular endothelium, you get decreased efficiency of diapedesis of leukocytes into the interstitium, increasing the propensity for infections like cellulitis like we have here. In addition, the patient will get peripheral neuropathy and diabetes, can't feel his or her feet. In this case, we have, we have a dude, obviously, uh, but the patient will be unable to feel his or her feet, get minor trauma, and then can't heal the area of trauma because of the vasculopathy, as I just described. So that's, that's the relevance of the type 2 diabetes here. It's not just uh, incidental or coincidental. So this guy is in shock. You can see he's febrile, fever 103, tacky at 120, respiratory rate 20. Normal range for respiratory rate should be 12 to 16 per minute. And he's hypotensive at 90 on 60. And then he's got elevated renal function tests, the blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, and his hepatic transaminases are elevated, okay? And this is actually a normal, uh, when I say normal finding, you can get increased uh, LFTs and renal function tests in states of shock, okay? So we have this image, this is cellulitis. So uh, I actually jacked up the saturation a little bit just to make this easier to see, uh, but this is, this is erythematous. Uh, more of a pinkish appearance. We would not call this fiery red necessarily as we'd have for erysipelas, uh, but classic cellulitis, okay? In, uh, infection of the uh, hypodermis, okay? It's slightly deeper than erysipelas, which is dermal. Now, blood cultures show gram-positive cocci and chains. Now, this can refer to classically strep pyogenes and enterococci. I've seen both in NBME questions. Gram-positive cocci in clusters is staph aureus. Gram-positive diplococci is strep pneumo. Don't confuse the latter with gram-negative diplococci, which of course is naeseria, meningitis, and gonorrhea. But gram-positive cocci in chains, that's going to be strep pyogenes or enterococcus. As I just said, I have seen both of those described as such in NBME questions. So we should be thinking here that we have shock due to strep pyogenes exotoxin A. Okay, this is not going to be toxic shock syndrome, although staph aureus eclipses strep pyogenes, which is group A strep, for cellulitis. Gram positive cocci in chains is are strep pyogenes, not staph aureus, which of course is the gram positive cocci in clusters. So this is shock caused by exotoxin A, strep pyogenes, and exotoxin A, we're just, we're just gonna look at the answers here. So choice A, ADP ribosylation of adenylocyclase, wrong fucking answer, but this is of course a high yield mechanism for a few toxins, Vibrio cholera toxin, ETEC, enterotoxigenic E. coli, heat, labile toxin. Both of those will ADP ribosylate adenyl cyclase, increase its activity. We also have pertussis toxin, which ADP ribosylates adenyl cyclase and, and inactivates, inactivates G alpha I. Uh, that's for pertussis. So you got increased CA impact, C, increased CAMP activity with uh, pertussis, vibrio, cholera, and ETEC heat labile toxin. Um, Bacillus anthracis, um, it's to the anthrax toxin mimics uh, adenylocyclase, but doesn't carry out any uh, ADP ribosylation function. Choice B, uh, binding of CD14 or toll-like receptor 4. This is the wrong answer, but this is high yield for, this is the answer for endotoxic shock. If we had an LPS, lipopolysaccharide, so if they told you gram-negative rods, like E. coli, for instance, uh, uh, for an endotoxic shock, okay, of some kind due to a gram-negative rod, uh, then 
CD14 on macrophages to like receptor 4, this is where LPS, our lipid A of LPS binds. The macrophages will then secrete various cytokines, TNF-alpha, IL-1, okay, TNF-alpha increases vascular permeability, uh, causes hypotension and shock. There, I've seen another, tangentially, I've seen another uh, question on NBME, NBME where they want you to know nitric oxide causes vasodilation and shock. Uh, but when you select cytokines, choose TNF-alpha for vasodilation and vascular permeability, uh, and then IL-1 causes fever. But that's what happens when we have binding of endotoxin to CD14, uh, tolic receptor 4 macrophages, is you get the release of those cytokines, and that's what causes your septic shock. So choice C, cleavage of 60S ribosomal subunit. Wrong fucking answer. That refers to EHEC, uh, enterohemorrhagic E. coli, which produces Shiga-like toxin or uh, Verotoxin, and also just, of course, Shigella producing Shiga toxin. Um, a lot we can talk about, but why don't we stay concise here? Choice D, inhibition of elongation factor 2, wrong answer. Okay, this refers to crony bacterium diphtheriae and also pseudomonas. Um, choice E, interaction with MHC2 and T cell receptor. This is the correct answer. And this is what exotoxin A of streptopyogenes does. It's a super antigen. Okay, so it bridges MHC2 and T cell receptor, and then we get release of cytokines from the macrophages and from the T cells. Okay, so this is the same mechanism for toxic shock syndrome when we, for from Staph aureus. So we have Staph aureus, which is going to, when we have like cotton packing tampons or someone was in a car, a car accident, nasal packing in the nose goes into shock. That's, an all, that's a, a variation of this question, right? You get Staph aureus instead. But um, if we have cotton packing, then you're going to choose interaction with MHC2 and T-cell receptors, same as this vignette. But we'd have gram-positive cocci in clusters, okay? It's a different vignette. Um, but when you get this, strep pyogenes exotoxin A, uh, it's the same mechanism of action, okay? Super antigen. So that's high yield for you. Don't confuse that with the binding of the CD14, as I mentioned before. That's LPS, lipid A, okay? That's endotoxic shock. And then finally, our last answer, uh, phospholipase alpha toxin production. Uh, that's clostridium perfringens, okay? That causes gas gangrene. So clostridium perfringens um, can cause secretory diarrhea as well. That's a, an NBME question, an old NBME question, where they give you gas gangrene. You say, okay, that sounds like clostridium perfringens. And that, like subcutaneous crepitus, subcutaneous emphysema, the cracking or uh, uh, crunchiness of the skin due to the air. And then they'll say this organism causes what else? The answer is secretory diarrhea. Okay, that's um, clustered in perfringens, this last answer. It's also known as a lecithinase. So this is fully loaded. We could do a very lengthy microbiology discussion. Okay, uh, but your take home point is that strep pyogenes is gram positive cocci in chains uh, and, and, of course, uh, enterococci. And then we've got Staph aureus, gram positive cocci in clusters, and strep pyogenes and Staph aureus both cause, are bo both produce super antigens uh, that will bind MHC2 and T cell receptor, leading to shock. And in contrast, endotoxic shock is CD14. Okay. So I'll make more content. You know the deal. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.